One hot summer day, 150 years ago, a steamboat was anchored in the middle of the Rio Grande between Camargo and Rio Grande City. Tied to the flagpole of that boat was a young man who had just turned 20 years old. That boat belonged to the boy's family, the Kennedys, but it was flying the Mexican flag because of the Civil War in the United States. The Union blockade stopped all Confederate boats, but the Union could not interfere with any Mexican boats. Everyone knew the boy, Adrian Vidal. He was from the second wealthiest family in Texas, son of Petra Vela and stepson of Mifflin Kennedy. Kennedy was the partner of Richard King of King Ranch. By 1865, Kennedy and King owned between them the largest ranches in the lower Rio Grande Valley on the Texas side of the river. Petra's family and other families of Mexican descent had owned the land long before. But by 1865, Petra was married to Kennedy and leading the project to build the Catholic Church in Corpus. Adrian Vidal had been plenty active already in his short life. He started out as captain in his stepfather's fleet of steamboats plying the Rio Grande. When Texas seceded, he organized as a teenager his own troops, known as the Independent Partisan Rangers, and offered their service to General Hamilton B's Confederate troops stationed in Brownsville. When Union forces threatened to invade Texas early on, Vidal and his men mobilized to defend their homeland. Above all, Adrian Vidal was committed to protecting his homeland and his people on both sides of the Rio Grande. His immediate loyalties were to those Tejanos who described themselves as Defensores de la Frontera. They championed poor Mexican Americans in Texas and their relatives living across the river on the Mexican side. His larger loyalty was to defend Republican ideals from imperialists and other threats on the sides of the border. The biggest threat in the 1860s to both republics was the French invasion of Mexico. Starting in 1862, Napoleon III sent 30,000 troops to overthrow President Benito Juárez and install an Austrian prince, Maximilian, as Emperor of Mexico. Napoleon III, nephew of the famous conqueror Napoleon I, especially one in the most prosperous parts of northern Mexico, Tamalupas and Sonora. No wonder Adrian Vidal was determined to protect Mexico from foreign invaders. His father, Luis Vidal, died in battle defending Mexico from foreign invaders. He fell in the Battle of Monterrey when U.S. troops were invading during the Mexican-American War. Adrian Vidal was just a baby then, but he grew up influenced by his father's sacrifice for Mexico and Borderlands people. So Adrian Vidal and his men fought to defend Mexico and Texas from whoever threatened either side of the lower Rio Grande Valley. Once the French invaded Mexico, Cinco de Mayo, 1862, Vidal discovered that the Confederates were siding with the French and imperialists against President Juarez and the defenders of the Republic. Slidell, the same U.S. ambassador to Mexico in 1845, who urged Polk to invade Mexico, had now gone to Paris in 1863 to urge Napoleon III to support the Confederacy and promised, in turn, to help the imperialistas defeat the Juaristas. This news made the Hanos very unhappy with the Confederates. Meanwhile, President Lincoln, Secretary of State Seward, and U.S. Ambassador to Mexico Thomas Corwin had been supporting Mexico's Republic and Benito Juarez against the French and Maximilian. In fact, Lincoln, Seward, and Corwin had also supported Mexico against the U.S. invasion in the 1840s and remained supportive in the 1850s. So when the Union troops prepared an invasion of Texas in November 1863, the Union recruiting officers promised to help Tejanos defeat the French and imperialists in Mexico. Tejanos believed them and joined the Union. Soon, Tejanos realized that the Union would not defend Mexico. Seward had ordered strict neutrality so as to avoid giving Napoleon III a pretext to declare war against the Union and support the Confederacy. Tejanos got very nervous because they learned in the spring of 1864 that the French were advancing on northern Mexico. Marching towards Matamoros and Camargo was none other than Charles Dupont, the dreaded counter-guerrilla leader. He and his men had committed so many abuses around Veracruz that he had been dubbed the Tiger of the Tropics. He burned villages, hung men, and killed women and children. In summer of 1864, Vidal sent his resignation to Union headquarters in New Orleans with his Union commander's approval, and it was approved. But before official notification arrived, Vidal and his men had to rush to help defend Mexico. Mejia and Dupont were fast approaching. General Tomás Mejia was the top imperialist general and he had been assigned to take Matamoros and control the lucrative cotton trade being smuggled out of Texas. That trade was the lifeline of the Confederacy because all other southern ports were blockaded by the Union. 
Kennedy and King made huge profits from the Confederate cotton trade during the Civil War. Mejia took over Matamoros in September 1864. And Dupont's men started attacking the borderlands people so badly that he earned the moniker Hyena of Tamalupas. As the Confederacy collapsed in late 1864 and early 1865, Confederates crossed into Mexico. Many joined the imperialists. Some even joined Dupont's counter guerrillas. By April 1865, after Lee's surrender, Vidal's own parents, Petra and Mifflin, also fled to Mexico and were living under Mejia's protection in Matamoros. Where was Adrian? He was in the borderlands fighting the imperialists desperately trying to save Republic from the French and Emperor Maximilian. He had allied his men with Cortina, Escobedo, and other Juarista generals defending Mexico. Vidal and the Juaristas were living outdoors in the mountain hideouts, dodging Tupan, entering trade routes, and staging bold raids into imperialist strongholds. Finally, the imperialists caught him. They broke their own laws and international codes of warfare by sentencing Adrián Vidal to summary execution. No trial, no evidence produced, just firing squad. Maximilian did not authorize summary execution of rebels, denying them belligerent status, until four months later in the infamous Black Decree of October 3, 1865. Because the execution order was illegal, the imperialists didn't dare kill this American citizen in Mexico, nor could they kill him in the United States. So they put him on his own steamboat with his uncle as captain. Immediately, Petra Vela offered his weight in gold as ransom. Mifflin Kennedy rushed to the boat to stop them, but the imperialists hastened to call forth the firing squad. As they lined up, Vidal tore his blindfold and uttered one last request. For the sake of my mother, spare my face. 150 years ago today, June 14, 1865, Adrián Vidal shouted his last words, probably loud enough to be heard in this plaza here in Rio Grande City. Viva la República! He yelled as the barrage of bullets tore his body and his face. His stepfather took his corpse home to his mother, and the family erected a tombstone in his honor. Engraved on the tombstone, Aquí yacen los restos del C. Adrián Vidal, Nació el día 9 de mayo de 1845 y falleció en junio a la edad de 20 años, un mes, cinco días. Sus padres, esposa, hija y hermanos le consecran ese recuerdo a su memoria. Imperial bullets ended Adrián Vidal's life that day, but his legacy lived on. One year and one day later, on June 16, 1866, Juaristas defeated the imperialists at the Battle of Santa Gertrudis. The Juaristas that day included Vidal's men and his allies, including Cortina, Escobedo, and a battalion from Camargo. That Juarista victory forced Mejia to withdraw from Matamoros, liberating Tamalupas. One year and three days later, June 19, 1865, Maximilian was executed and Mexico was free. After three foreign invasions in the previous 30 years, after losing half their territory to the U.S. in 1848, no more foreign troops ever invaded Mexico again. Vidal's personal legacy also lives on. Two months after his execution, his wife, Ana Chavero de Vidal, gave birth to their daughter, christened Maria Josefa Ana Vidal Chavero. His daughter chose to bear his real name all her life. She renamed herself Ana Adrienne Vidal, she married Louis Cohen, a Russian immigrant's son, and bore many children. The imperialists shed Adrian Vidal's blood on June 14, 1865, but they didn't destroy his bloodline. Today, many Texans descend from Vidal, and the Kennedy Museum in Sarita, Texas honors his legacy. His men also deserve credit. These Tejanos risk life, liberty, and family to protect Fronterizos from Tupan and to defend Mexico's republic from Napoleon and Maximilian's imperialists. One of Vidal's men just got recognition from the U.S. Army just last year. But let us list them all. Thank you to Jerry Thompson. We have a list of each of Vidal's men.